For today's shave, the loading bowl finally gets to shine in its true form as a lathering bowl. Stay tuned. Hello again, Michael Freebrick here from beautiful North Carolina. Today I have three shaving products for review, a shaving cream, a new razor, and a new brush. So let's start off with the shaving cream first. This was kindly gifted to me, uh, among a variety of other products, including the vintage Col uh, the Colgate puck that I used previously. This is the Williams Golden Yellow Lather Shaving Cream. Uh, I found an ad for this in a 1957 uh, Life magazine, the tube, the tube of lathering cream at the time was being sold for 70 cents and its, uh, its big sell, the big draw was the fact that it didn't include lanolin, it included a cream of lanolin, a very dense 25 times concentrated lanolin. So we'll talk about the product in just a moment, I'll show what it looks like. I am going to be lathering this differently than I normally do because of the brush that I'm using. I received two brushes for review from Frank Shaving. This is the G2 Synthetic uh, Animal Hair Knot. I do really like how this knot looks. A very kind of a natural look to the, uh, uh, to the fibers. Relatively short, kind of a chubby style handle. This is a 23 millimeter knot. Uh, the knot is much springier and denser and a little bit stiff um, much more so than sort of the normal crop, the kind of the current crop of synthetic fibers. And we'll talk about where this brush does do well and where it doesn't do so well um, as we get lathered up. And then for today's shave, it's going to be a Frank Shaving DE. I'm gonna assemble that now and then we'll start lathering and talking about the brush and the cream in just a moment. This is a, uh, what looks like a standard DE89 head although I will say it is certainly, uh, in terms of efficiency and comfort, more on the efficient side, a little more aggressive than the D89. So let me just get that assembled. Very standard assembly, it's just a three post top cap. I'm using a Rockwell razor's blade. I've changed my approach to the blades for this week only. I've been going through a variety of blades. I have quite a number of single blades. Oh, let me show you the, the base plate a little bit flatter and a little bit square than some of the ones you might otherwise see, which I think contributes to the slight difference in the head geometry. Um, the blade is a little bit flatter with some pretty good exposure. So let me get that assembled. I am including, as always, the nylon M5 washer. A nice long handle with a very, uh, quite a different sort of ergonomic shape to it. Light is obviously like a synthetic material, um, very easy to hold not slippery in use unless you get it very soapy um, or if you use a pre-shave oil and i will caution you there pre-shave oil i think is going to have a bit of a uh, bit of an impact there okay oh i thought i caught myself but i didn't all right let me get my face wet put some cream into the loading slash lathering bowl and let's go and get started yeah the cream is old i'm sure that cream is from the from the mid or late 50s and it still absolutely works immediately there's no issue lathering it um, it is a very I'll just put some of my fingers so you can see it is in fact kind of a cool golden yellow color it does uh, lather up white so I'm gonna put quite a bit in the uh, in the lather bowl I haven't been shy with the amount that I've used and if I need to use more I will All right, let me just put that down it is of course a metal tube so you experience things like crimping or where some of the uh, the coating uh, is flaking off that's just that's just how it goes with metal tubes all right uh it is very slick and slippery to the feel so i have some just put into the loading bowl we get the brush wet we'll start lathering this up we'll talk about the brush so synthetic hairs quite springy stiff and a little bit bristly this i think would make a great brush for people that have very dense beard growth only shave once or twice a week and really like a kind of a good amount of scrub but also want to use a synthetic brush and don't want to go for the ones that are kind of very soft or pillowy or don't have a lot of a lot of backbone or that splay quite easily uh, i have found this however to be uncomfortable in normal face lathering use the way that i face lather which was with a lot of circular motion and splaying the brush and so on 
This is just too prickly and too dense and too springy. This is 100% better suited for loading soap off a hard puck. It is very well suited for something like bowl lathering and then simply painting the lather on. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I've obviously shaken up much of the water from the brush. I've just dipped the tips again. I'm just gonna start building a lather in the lather bowl for today. My multi-purpose loading lathering bowl from Captain's Choice. As you can see, it goes from yellow cream to white lather almost immediately. I'm gonna add some water to that. Not too much because you can drown this soap or this cream easily. So I wanna avoid that. I think you should all take note of my absolutely masterful bowl lathering technique. Even though I basically never do this. And I'm being pretty vigorous with the brush, by the way, because the brush has got a lot of uh, a lot of structure to it. So apologies for the clanking, but I'm just trying to get this as lathered as I can. I'm going to add a bit more water. It still feels a little airy and a little foamy, but that is building quite nicely. As you can see, it's not watery or runny or kind of losing a structure yet. Now, I know that for many of you, this is sort of the normal way that you build lather, and that is totally fine. I have nothing against bowl lathering. It's one of these things where I feel like I've done all this work, and yet there's nothing happening to my face. But that's going to happen in just a moment. So, all right, that feels pretty good. That's got a nice, nice kind of shine and structure to it. So, we go and just put a bit more water on my face, and then we'll paint on the lather as opposed to kind of vigorously face lathering. There we go. Two days of growth, as always, for these Sunday shaves. Looking unkempt on Saturdays is the price I have to pay for this Sunday. All right, I'm going to add a touch more water to that, but as you can see, all I'm really doing is just using the brush to paint on. I'm not trying to face lather in the normal way. Yeah, that feels like it can use a touch more water. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, no issue. Despite the aids, I'm just scooping off a lot of the foam at the bottom there. No issue building a lather. Now, what I will say, this is a very lanolin rich product. And when you begin to lather this up, and this may just be the age of the soap, or age of the cream, there is a slight but distinct animalic or funky scent. I don't think that that's how this smelled in the original. I was, I, from the ads or from some of the stuff I've read online, it had kind of a faint cologne style scent. Um, I don't think this was a shaving cream that was sold for its scent, obviously just more for its shaving purposes. All right, let's go ahead and get the razor wet. Just warm it through. This is the second shave on this Rockwell razor blade. I think I've used a Gillette 7 o'clock. As you can hear, by the way, a big bit of feedback from the razor. I have a small collection of sort of individual sets of blades and people that have sent me blades or I got a blade sample, I just had a few left, so I'm trying to work my way through that a little bit. And where those blades often don't work for me for like, for you know, for the longevity in terms of a week's worth of shaving. I'll use that blade for a day or two and then move on. The razor head has a, a very uh, kind of comfortable feeling and a very recognizable feeling, but given the uh, the geometry and sort of the angle of the blade compared to the angle of the head, the way the blade is a little flatter than the angle of the head, it is a bit more aggressive and a bit more efficient, shall we say, than the, uh, than the Edwin Jagger D89 head style.
That also means you can ride the cap a little bit and try to reduce that. It also means you just need to kind of watch the pressure. I think if you, uh, if you don't, you're gonna overshave with this razor and give yourself a little bit of razor burn, so just nice light touch. And you can see I'm sort of holding it a bit lower on the handle because the, the, the width of the handle makes that quite easy to do. You don't feel like you have to kind of choke up on it. There we go, almost done. There we go. All right, so in terms of the soap, soap is, the soap is pretty slick. Not super slick, but pretty slick. But it does have a nice kind of protective feel to it because it is really quite fatty. And you really feel that when you start to rinse it. You can feel that there's just like a residual layer of kind of dense fat that's left behind. All right, I'm just pulling some of the soap from the, oh God, there's so much water dripping down my head. Just pulling some of the soap from the bottom of the brush and again, just painting on the remaining lather. What I'll do for the third pass is, in fact, I'm gonna do that right now. There's still quite a bit left in the bowl. I'm gonna pull some of that out. Yeah, this is absolutely not the slickest shaving cream that I've ever used. It's slick, but I would have to say it is more on the protective side than the slick side. Hope that makes sense. There we go. Yeah, in terms of the brush, uh, if you poke this straight in, I think you're gonna find this to be quite prickly. So just something to bear in mind. This works very well in terms of applying lather to your face. I don't think I'd recommend this for building a lather on your face. All right, rinse my hands. Mm. Reduce the chance of getting soap in my mouth. All right, let's go for the across the gray pass. Yeah, and the soap actually was kind of a good choice because for a variety of reasons, weather being a big part of it, skin remains very dry. So having this extra sort of blast of lanolin has helped. Certainly reduced sort of the drying effect of the, uh, the morning shave. Yeah, and it's sort of in these next two passes where just watch the pressure. I feel like the razor is uh, deceptively efficient in the sense that you may not quite realize because it is still pretty comfortable and there's no sense of blade chatter or looseness or anything like that. But, it's really taken off the hair. Touch of overhang to watch out for there. There we go, quick, easy second pass. And I've been giving myself a bit of a, a bit of a break this week, in part because my skin is so dry. Really watching and not overdoing it. All right, third pass against the grain. I'm gonna scoop out 
uh, as much as I can of the remaining lather from the bowl, which is still quite a bit. And let's just paint it on. Now you have to admit, you are pretty impressed by that bowl lather. I know it's unexpected, but still shockingly good. Just imagine I did that every day. Oh, get that soap out of my mouth. All right, there we go. Let's get this lathered up and then we can go for the final pass. I do have another um, another brush that Frank Shaving sent for review as well. So I got two brushes and the, uh, and the razor. The other brush is a too bad finest badger, I believe. All right, let's paint that on. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right, last pass. Just rinse off my hands and we'll go and get shaving. Yeah, um, The reason I know this handle is a little more slippery with the oil is because I do on occasion use some of the Dr. John's beard oil and hair oil. And so if I apply that first, comb my hair in the morning, and then I shave after that, which is the sequence of events, if I have any of that oil still in my hands, that oil does make this handle a little bit slippery. But just in normal shaving use, not at all. All right, here we go. Last pass against the grain. Very light on the pressure here. As always, and I think I say this every couple every couple shaves, but it clearly bears repeating just because that's the way I do it. I'm always shooting for close and comfortable. Irritation free. Anything after that is a gift. You know, overdoing it just always leads to bad results for me. Either razor burn or skin irritation or nicks and cuts you know I do have to shave every day or I like to shave every day I don't have to shave every day I know that some of you do and in those cases I would 100% say the same thing keep a focus on close comfortable irritation free and everything that happens after that is just bonus Yeah, these Rockwell blades are pretty good fit for this razor head. Almost done. Well, here we go. Oh, that was almost more soap in my mouth. All right, let's rinse and see how we're doing. Yep, there's the touch underneath there. I'm not gonna relather. This is quite wet and still nice and slippery. There we go. Nice light touch, just, just sort of riding over the skin. All right. Now, as I said, rinsing is where you can really feel kind of a fatty, greasy residue from the soap because there is so much lanolin in it. And it just, uh, it's hard to rinse off 
but in a good way because what you can feel there is the residual slickness from the or greasiness kind of skin conditioning from the uh, from the lanolin. All right, it's towel off. Wow, not bad. Yeah, and just think that 50 years from now, there's gonna be somebody, maybe, still doing shaving review videos and using a vintage tube of palm olive. All right, let's go ahead and apply the aftershave toner. That is a really nice, that's a really nice shave actually. A little bit of slickness or sort of greasiness from the soap. Not bad, my skin feels pretty good right now, but I will say that, you know, after a while, it does tighten up and feel quite dry. Um, the, you know, sort of the skin protective qualities of, of the cream really only last for a very little bit after the shave. This is not meant to be in any way like an all day skin conditioning thing. It's really more during the shave and right after the shave. Um, as promised, the return of the man from Mayfair, holy cow, this is the aftershave toner. So this is not designed to be a moisturizing uh, product. This is just a very, very nice aftershave product. Give it a good shake to mix it up. You know, a little bit in your hand, not too much. Very, very nice face feel on top of the shaving cream. A nice light, slightly slick feel to it. Nice calming effect. The scent still lovely and it's it's there when you put it on and then it very quickly fades but as you apply it you get a nice good strong whiff of it this is not meant to be something that you wear for the scent for hours by any stretch but as a toner it's fantastic really makes my skin feel good and a very nice pairing with that soap well all right let me rinse my hands and let's go over what we use for it today for that in the end very nice shave all right, let's start at the top. Let's go with the, let me, in fact, I'm not sure that I show you the original box. I don't remember, so in case I didn't, here you go. This is the original box that the cream came in. As you can see, Williams Gold and Yellow Lather Shaving Cream. I think this came in a brushless formula and then also in a, uh, a pressurized can. Here is the, the tube again. Williams Gold and Yellow Lather Shaving Cream. Lanolin rich. No kidding. Very, very nice shaving cream, actually. A nice, slick, kind of greasy, heavy feel to it. Better on the protective side than really on the slick side. It's pretty slick. It's not crazy slick. Very nice protective with a really nice uh, kind of post-shave skin feel. Lasts for a little bit, not, not with any kind of real longevity. Um, you will definitely need to apply something once you're done shaving. The razor for today is the Frank shaving. This is, I'm not sure what the model number is on this one, um, but it kind of is, like I said, it kind of is close to a standard D89 head style. Nice, big, wide handle. Razor is uh, nicely balanced, definitely more efficient. Um, you can feel the blade more than you can with a D89. Nice, close shaves. Just watch the presser and just pay attention because it actually is a little bit deceptive in terms of how efficient it is a little more aggressive than you might think when you initially start shaving with it. Actually quite a nice razor and uh, in the scheme of things, <laughs> that's for you again, very easy to use. All right, the Frank shaving, let me see if I can get that logo there, there you go. This is the G2 synthetic knot which I has uh, been designed to look like animal hair. I like the way that the hairs look quite a bit. This is 100% for me a hard soap, bowl lathering kind of brush for painting on the lather or applying the lather to your face. This is not a good face lathering brush. So if what you're looking for is a synthetic brush and you are a bowl lather or use hard soaps, this is gonna be a very good choice for you. If you like a bit of scrub, a bit of density and backbone, you don't mind a little bit of this, of the sort of the prickly scrubbly feel on your face. You might have a very dense beard growth or shave only intermittently. This is certainly a synthetic knot you should take a careful look at. If you are a face lather and looking for kind of a pillowy soft feel with a lot of splay in the brush, this is not the brush for you. Uh, if you were looking for a barbershop style scent in a very effective aftershave toner, holy cow, man from Mayfair, highly recommended. Very, very happy with this product. I'm going to continue to use it um, often for those shaves where I don't have a matching aftershave. Um, it'll be in there with a couple others. That is still very, very high on the list. 
wonderful product. All right. Oh, tiny little nick there. Didn't really feel that happened, so let's not worry about that at all. All right, my friends, that's it for today. Let's call it quits right there. Thank you so much again, as always, for watching these videos. I really appreciate the time you're taking to watch them. Of course, as always, please continue to leave your comments or questions against this video or any previous video. Thank you again so much for watching, and until next time, goodbye.